Hong Kong sure has a lot of stuff. Uh, like the world's best urban hiking trails and uh, the world's best uh, subway system. Uh, at least according to me. Uh, I've, I've made a video about it. But uh, if you disagree, uh, you at least have to agree that we have the best uh, hiking trails that are also accessible by subway. Uh, but anyway, uh, there are a few things that I think Hong Kong is missing. Uh, so let's just get into it. Number one, zoo. We don't have a zoo. Uh, Hong Kong is probably the biggest city in the world without a zoo, I think. I mean, there's no, it's not really a real stat about it. Uh, and also you might say, oh, what about the Hong Kong Zoological and Botanical Garden? Uh, no, uh, a few monkeys and birds uh, a zoo does not make. Uh, I think you at least need like a lion or a zebra or an elephant or a giraffe to be a zoo, you know. Uh, something from the, an animal from the movie Madagascar. Uh, you might say, oh, Ocean Park has pandas and some other animals. No, that's a theme park. Doesn't count. I'm talking about uh, a, a city zoo that's cheap or free to visit. You know, like a place that you can take your kids to on a random weekend. Uh, bonus points if there's also a petting zoo with goats and chickens. Uh, okay, number two. Pedestrian only zones. So getting back on track on uh, things about urban planning and stuff. Uh, I think Hong Kong has too many cars, uh, to be frank. And uh, but we have even more pedestrians. That's one way to put it. Uh, another way to put it is that uh, Hong Kong has too many people who choose to drive, but even more people who choose to walk because walking is a default because you're you're born to walk, not to drive, and you don't need a license to walk. But I think the city doesn't give enough priority to the majority, actually. So I'm talking about pedestrians here, by a long shot. Uh, if you, you just have to look at uh, how much space is uh, dedicated to pedestrians uh, during rush hours. So Hong Kong may have the world's most utilized public transport system, but it doesn't mean it's the most uh, protected or valued. Uh, we don't even have bus lanes. Uh, are you telling me that San Francisco, an American city, can ban private cars to drive down their, you know, their main street, which is Market Street. Uh, but Hong Kong can't do that for Nathan Road. Come on, the sidewalks are too crowded, and although the roads are also packed, they're still not carrying as many people as the sidewalks. So, you know, some pedestrian-only zones would be nice. And while we're at it, number three, uh, I think Hong Kong can use more streetcars, as in trams. Now, the problem, you know, since we're talking about the comparison to Market Street uh, in San Francisco, uh, I mean, trams are probably one of the most iconic icons of Hong Kong, so why not build more of them? I mean, I can think of a few routes in Kowloon where this may work, you know, like along uh, Argyle Road and Lychikok Road where the subway doesn't run currently. Maybe have the trams share a uh, dedicated bus lane with buses? I don't know, I just think it'll be cool. Maybe, you know, make Nathan Road a pedestrian only zone with trams in the middle. I think it'll be kind of nice. Uh, and why stop there? Why not, you know, build them out towards the new developments too? Uh, why not build one out to one of those beautiful beaches in Sai Kong? Although, you know, admittedly the terrain may not allow it. So why not build, uh, you know what, number four, cable cars. Uh, Hong Kong has the perfect geography for cable cars, or actually the other way around. Uh, cable cars are perfect for a lot of Hong Kong's terrain. And right now they're only the one that goes up Victoria Peak, which is mostly just for tourists, and the one that goes to the Big Buddha, which is also for tourists. And I guess if you want to count the one that's inside Ocean Park. But I think we should build more because cable cars are just fun and tourists love them and most people love them. And, and tourism is pretty big in Hong Kong. Uh, yeah, and I think the biggest attraction of Hong Kong is the city itself, uh, meaning you know, to the ability to get to a high place and look down at the city, which is why the cable car up to Victoria Peak is so popular. And you know what? I don't think Victoria Peak even gives the best view of the city, maybe the most iconic, sure, but that's largely because of the cable car, and you know, so it's accessible to to go up that specific mountain. And I think personally. The view from the top of Lion Rock, it's better. 
and you can see more of the city too, uh, because from Victoria Peak you can't really see most of Kowloon uh, clearly, uh, which is most of the city. Uh, uh, so if it's up to me, I'll build a cable car from Lok Fu or Kowloon Tong uh, up to uh, the Kowloon Pass, which is like halfway up the hike to Lion Rock. Uh, I don't want to completely ruin uh, the nature of uh, the you know Lion Rock by having a huge cable car station next to it. Uh, but, you know, Kowloon Pass, I think there's some space there, perhaps. Uh, there are also other routes that would make sense, too. For example, between, uh, you know, Wukaisa and Saikong, and maybe Saikong and uh, Diamond Hill or Kowloon Bay, I don't know. Uh, maybe between uh, Taiwan and Stanley, or between uh, Zhengguanou and Clearwater Bay, you know. Uh, between, you know, like a, like a subway station and the touristy areas and the beaches. Speaking of beaches, number five, uh, Hong Kong really should have a proper beach resort. I mean, yes, I know we technically have the Golden Coast, but that beach sucks because all the nice beaches in Hong Kong are over on the east side uh, where uh, it is not really currently accessible by mass transit. Uh, they are much nicer on, on that side because they're f- like far away, they're faced away from uh, the mouth of the Pearl River. Uh, because rivers tends to spew out quite a bit of uh, sediments and so the beaches on on the west side and even on the island uh, are, are nowhere as nice as the ones over uh, the, in Saigon and I'll tell you what although uh, it's only a 30 minute taxi ride from from uh, you know East Kowloon to get to say Clearwater Bay in Saigon it's just a hassle to having to pack everything and go change and and take care of your kids at the public bathroom and go for a swim and then, you know, wash the sand off your feet and hose down your kids and then call an Uber and stuff. It's, it's a lot. It'll be much, much nicer if there's a hotel right there at one of the nicer beaches. So, you know, people can go there for a day and just hang out at the room and go down to the beach and go back to the room. I mean, it doesn't even have to be a huge thing. It could be just a few, you know, nice cabins where uh, you can hike to perhaps. Uh, I mean, yeah, a lot of the nicer beaches in Hong Kong are only accessible by trails. And speaking of uh, spots you need to hike to, number seven, uh, mountaintop cabins. I think it would be nice for for someone to build some cabins up near some of the peaks of Hong Kong so people can hike up there for the sunset and stay for the sunrise, say, uh, near Lantau Peak. Uh, I mean, a lot of people already do this now with tents, and I get that they may want to gatekeep it as like a rite of passage sort of thing, which is why I didn't say we should have some cabins at the peak, just near the peak, or maybe like a less popular peak, uh, just nearby. Uh, I mean, there are a lot of beautiful hikes in Hong Kong, and I mean absolutely beautiful hikes, but they're not very accessible. Uh, you may say, of course, it's not accessible because it's fucking the hike up a mountain. But I- I'm not talking about like wheelchair accessible, just general accessibilities. Uh, because most of these hikes in Hong Kong are pretty demanding, especially the good ones. So if you have small children or, or uh, older parents, a lot of these routes are just out of the question because you need to hike up and down the mountain on the same day, essentially. Simple as that. So having some cabins up along some of these trails would allow more people uh, to enjoy these trails. You know, people who can't do everything in one go. Uh, So people don't have to also haul up as much food and water, for instance, and they can take their time to uh, hike and rest. And, you know, maybe popular among young people too, you know, as another romantic date spot for canoodling. Uh, Because the next item on my list is number eight, housing. This one's super obvious, since we're talking about the, you know, space for young people, especially. Uh, Hong Kong need more housing and cheaper housing. How do we do it without causing mass hysteria in the entire economy? Uh, uh, because, you know, the Hong Kong economy is... Because how the housing market makes up so much of Hong Kong's economy. And is it possible without all the elites throwing a fit f- and uh, fleeing the city and burning everything to the ground? I, I don't know. That's the trillion dollar question for not just Hong Kong, but also for China and, you know, the world. Uh, but I think most economists would agree that uh, it's probably the worst in Hong Kong, even, you know, compared to the rest of the world in terms of 
kind of cost, uh, housing cost calibrated by median income for a major global developed city. I mean, we have pretty good uh, infrastructure and public benefits uh, to kind of make up for part of that in terms of quality of life, but that's a whole different story. It's very complicated and interconnected uh, stuff. So let's kind of shelf that discussion for now. And talk about something else. Number nine, vegetarian food. Did you know that Hong Kong people eat more meat per capita than Americans? What? Yes, that's true. You can look it up. We eat a lot of meat here, and I don't like it. And I'm not even a vegetarian. I mean, uh, I know I can order a side of greens with every meal、uh, in Hong Kong, but that's extra. I mean, I don't mind paying extra, but it's the principle of having veggies as an extra portion because I still have to eat all the meat that comes、uh, with, like as a default with the meal, which is a lot of the time is too much meat. I mean, there also aren't a lot of good vegetarian options in general、uh, because a lot of times when you order a vegetable dish, there may still be some animal products in them, like chicken broth and stuff. I mean, that doesn't really bother me as much because I'm not a vegetarian, but I just want to eat less meat. And you know, I get that could be a big problem for a lot of people. I mean, there are also like traditional Buddhist food around the city, but those dishes are literally just gluten most of the time, which again, I don't mind. But that's not a lot of options. I just want like a you know good falafel or a good veggie spring roll, or maybe like a big Caesar salad that's not half chicken.、Uh, Hong Kong does have a very very strong fruit game, so it kind of makes up for that. Uh, number ten. This one's kind of niche,、uh, which is、uh, pubs and music venues.、Uh, for all, for for everything that Hong Kong learned from the Brits,、uh, pubs isn't one of them. I know there are pubs in Hong Kong, but they're mainly for expats and kind of fuck boys who live on the live on like a very relatively small neighborhood on Hong Kong Island.、Uh, that's not what I meant. I want neighborhood pubs where you can just go and hang out and talk to people who, you know, who are not trying to impress their dates or pick up a local girl.、Uh, music venues is the other thing.、Uh, there is no shortage of、uh, events like concerts.、Uh, don't get me wrong, but they're mostly kind of international touring acts or local pop idol shows. You know, I I, I want the kind of、uh, hole-in-the-wall music venues for shitty local indie bands. Which existed for a short time in Hong Kong in the 2000s and maybe the early 2010s. And also, I like to see more, you know, pubs and、uh, also beer gardens in Hong Kong as well.、Uh, but that's、uh, the prerequisites for that is I think、uh, if we can get more pedestrian space first that are not confined to、uh, you know parks and stuff that's not really connected to businesses. Uh, so basically, like my complaint for really anything and in anywhere in the world, problems usually too many cars and space and things to do for cars and not enough space and things to do for people without the driver's license. Okay, I'm done rambling here for now. My name is Yu Yun, and thank you for watching.